Hello, this is Dr. Kornman. We're going to talk about the Bryan cervical disc system. This is an animation of the insertion technique. You first start by the level of the bad disc where you remove the anterior bone spurs. Then you remove the disc. At this point, you then have to find the perfect position for the two guide pins, which are essential to align the disc. This device is designed to help you find midline and to pick a specific point. You can see these small holes that are created in the vertebra, which are guide marks. You then create a drill hole for the guide pins that you're going to be placing. This is the guide pin itself that's inserted into the hole you've drilled. You want this hole and the guide pin to be parallel to the disc space and a certain distance. You can then distract the disc space somewhat. There's many different tools. This is one of the tools you can use. Preparation of the disc space is essential. You'll see here that the disc space is reduced from being round to more parallel. You can also at this time remove the posterior bone spurs that compress the spinal cord and also you're going to remove the uncovertebral joint spurs which are pressing into the nerve root. The nerve roots you see here depicted in yellow. And this tool, the kerosene, is the device that's utilized to remove those spurs to free up the nerve root. Then you have to have a trial to determine the correct size of the end plate. Here with the red marks you'll see the trial does not fit all the way to the back of the disc and this device here does with the green line indicating the back part of the disc space. This trial then is placed in and the surfaces that accept it have to be parallel. If you look down here with the red marks you'll see that there's still a curve of the disc space and further work has to be done to accept a perfectly parallel trial. Once you have this this trial device should fit in and fit nicely adjacent to the disk space surfaces. This is an ingenious router that is placed in to create saucer shaped depressions to fit the disk itself. You'll see here the saucer shaped depressions and then this is the actual artificial disk which is deployed. The deployment is removed and now it fits in perfectly. There'll be some ingrowth between the vertebra and this device. Now we did not discuss the indications for this. You can find the indications for artificial disc placement on the website in another thread. Thank you.